Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you how to make your own cool thumbnails. If you're new here and you find this video helpful, please subscribe so you know when I drop new content. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for spending time with me today. Let's begin. And a special shout out goes to the viewer, Wide World of Trains. Wide World of Trains, thank you for your question you submitted and I made this thumbnail for you using the same method I'm about to teach in this tutorial. If you want an HD copy, let me know. And we're off. This tutorial may go a little fast if you do not know how to use Shotgut. I have a video that teaches for beginners. And let's jump right in and get the video that we're going to be using. Me being silly, let's take this and let's put it on the third layer. Then we're going to need a background. Let's go ahead and look for the blue sky. We'll use that as our background. Open it. And the background should always be in the very bottom layer. And let's say we want to put a couple of objects in there to make our thumbnail a little bit more interesting. Let's open up the chipmunk. And also let's go ahead and open up another object, this arrow. And drag it down on that layer. Let's click here, turning off the eyeball. Let's leave the background on. Now let's click on the main video and let's find a frame where I don't look so silly. So right between here and over here. Oh, the fan's getting kind of loud, so I'm making it work. So with the third layer being clicked and selected, having the red border, I'm going to split there at the playhead and I'm going to go a little bit forward of my silliness. Okay, that's pretty silly. Oh, that's very silly. Okay, that's, that's okay. That's interesting. Click over here, split it playhead right there. Let's delete everything in the front. Let's delete everything in the back. Another silly face. So now let's put the playhead over here. That's a nice silly face. The objects are now smaller because we shortened the, shortened everything in the timeline. So let's stretch them out so they're just as long as the video clip so once we find a good frame you leave the playhead where it's at because you move it anymore you'll change to a different frame I shoot most of my stuff in video I don't take green screen photos so this is why I choose a video editor to make my thumbnails it's a little trick so right about here I will leave the playhead so from now on I'm not gonna touch the plate anymore and all of these need to line up with this playhead so the background is at the bottom it's gonna be the base Let's go to the picture that we're going to green screen away. Let's add our filter, Chroma Key Advanced. Now all of this is covered in my video, How to Green Screen with Shotcut. So I will proceed forward. Click that drop to there as you can see as soon as I click the dropper to the color that I want to chroma key away part of the background you can already see coming through that being said let's hide that let's make the background full screen so with the background layer selected in red let's add the filter size position and rotate click it now we can grab it by the corners and make it smaller or bigger now be careful because once you go off screen it's difficult to find this little corner so I clicked and held and I did not let go as I drag. So in this case, what we're going to want to do is make it almost full screen. Go here to the center, then click hold and drag, let you move the whole thing around. I'm gonna take this up to the left, and now I will drag down to the right. Now the bottom background fits the whole screen. Right here, this is the video. This is what we will see when we're done. So now I'll grab it by the center and I'll line it up to get some more cloud coverage. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Where do I like the clouds? There's more. Oh, that looks kind of good with the big cloud right there. Okay. Keep in mind, when you make a thumbnail in this manner, each and every thumbnail you make is a work of art. It's a work of creativity. I think I like that one better. So now that the base layer, the background, is full screen, let's unhide my silly face. Let's click that layer, the third one. Finish the chroma key procedure. Not too hard. And again, all of this is covered in the tutorial, so I'm going a little fast because I like to keep my tutorials as short as possible. I don't want to waste any of your time. So out to max, that does nothing. Where's the effective range right there? Find the effective range right there. Find the effective range. Nope. It's a work of art. It's a finesse each and every time. Almost perfect. Almost got it all gone. Here we have my silly face over the background. Now let's give that a size position and rotate filter. I like to be off to the right. You know, this time let's go off to the left. Okay, so now let's put in our next object, the chipmunk. Let's take off the hide. Let's show it. Now this is going to be a very easy chroma key green screen effect because the color is so uniform. The third layer with me in it, if we hide the chipmunk, if we just uncheck the chroma key filter, 
you see my green behind me the lighting is not perfect so here it's a little bit brighter here's a little bit darker let's put the filter back on okay green is gone now let's do the chipmunk this chipmunk is over or above this layer it already goes from top to bottom this will go on top of that and that will go on top of that and that and that's why the bottom one is always the background and it's always full screen let's get the chipmunk done if we unhide this if we show it it takes over because it's on top so let's hide it let's give him the green screen filter the chroma key take the dropper and this may be one step and done boom so you notice he has a green outline right around him but for the most part that was a one step chroma key effect so let's take this up a little bit watch it melt away let's take this up a little too much starts to eat into the other colors and then the last one for fine tuning let's see if we can get that green right there to go away if we go full 100 percent on this blue delta it doesn't seem to eat into the other colors so let's move on to the next one above it let's show this object or unhide it click the little eye now here we have a dark object on a white background so let's click that layer and let's give it the chroma key filter it's not a green screen but let's take out that white notice how everything else behind it is no longer visible that's because of this one right here take that to minimum there we go let's go back up and let's get the dropper select the color white and boom again almost a perfect chroma key effect there's a little bit of white border around the dark object this arrow so let's adjust the slide bar and see if we can't get that white border perimeter to go away from the object all the way forward the object is now free and clear so as you can see the chroma key is not a green screen effect it's a color remover so this was white the chipmunk was over green i was over various shades of green so now let's give this object arrow a size position and rotate filter let's make it smaller get it out of the way but it's still very much in the thumbnail okay so we're almost finished let's throw in some letters some words on the top layer it works best if you use the top layer otherwise it will be under stuff or beneath stuff so let's add the filter text rich click inside the box and i want it to say sky Let's make the box smaller because that is pretty much all it's going to be. Let me highlight and select, make it bigger, 222. Let's see how that looks. Let's change the color to something a little bit more visible in this color. Okay, that'll work. Let's move it right here. Okay, let's add another text filter. Click in the box. This one's going to say high, sky high. And let's go for... 155 not too big because it needs to fit in between the characters 188 sky high because the color of your letters and the color of the background are going to have a unique relationship with every thumbnail so now let's move this around let's adjust it a little bit lower if we want to see the full preview let's click one of the layers over here there's an object, the first letter box, the second letter box. Here's an object, and then here is me, which I didn't really need to include. You don't have to, but sometimes viewers want to know that there's a real person behind the voice that they're listening to or watching. So we're almost finished. Let me show you a word of caution. Up here is the playhead. If you move it, watch what happens to my goofy little face right there see it follows so if at any point you find the perfect frame in the video then make sure not to move the playhead otherwise you may end up with this when you really wanted that and the last thing before we finish if these layers do not line up along the playhead then whatever isn't here on this playhead will not show up in the final clip so if i grab this object click it and drag it over here it's going to disappear from the final clip i let it go the playhead is here it's showing us this layer is empty it's showing us that layer with the chipmunk me in the background if we move the chipmunk over here now it didn't disappear immediately that's just a bug and shortcut but if you move the playhead from there to there it is now gone because the chipmunk is over here move the playhead over here guess what we'll see so let's line everything back up let's bring the chipmunk back but the playhead goes right about there and let's bring in the chipmunk so now we're about finished with this thumbnail 
We're not here to make a video, we're here to make the thumbnail. So we will go to File, Export Frame, Control Shift E. That says wherever this playhead is. And then you go to File and click Export Frame. It's going to save this right here. Whatever you can see will be in the frame, the export frame. And that's how I make my thumbnails. So click Export Frame. It brings up basically a save as. So from this point, we're finished. We're now saving the thumbnail. We're giving it a file name. No, just simply our thumbnail project will do as a JPEG. And boom, there's our thumbnail that we created just now together. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or requests, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you. See you next time.